Welcome to Lost in Revision. All of our content is public domain, literature, fairy tales, and folklore. We are here to celebrate the original stories, not just read the modern sanitized versions. We post short segments of stories daily and monthly full episodes where we read and discuss popular classics. Come and find us on Patreon to listen to the full chapters early and without interruption. Our goal is to at least break even to cover our expenses, so any support that you can offer to help us reach that goal helps keep this podcast going and you entertained. All of our music is by Nathan Hubble and is used with his permission. Thanks, and enjoy the show. Chapter 5 Paul's Camp in Maine Part 1 Paul's first task, after he and the seven axemen had finally come to the place in the deacon's woods where he intended to build his camp, was to get rid of the gumbaroos and the gorapelters. So, while the axemen all seated themselves, leaned their backs comfortably against broad tree trunks, and lit their pipes, Paul stood thinking out some method of driving the troublesome creatures away. Paul was a great thinker, and there was never any problem that could keep him puzzled for long. The Gumbaroos are afraid of fire, he said to himself, and they will run away if they notice even the least sign of it. Now, that is a weakness that I ought to be able to use against them. But how? And he thought so hard over the matter that the seven axemen could hear the low whir of his brain working. Just then, a big cloud of smoke from one of the axemen's pipes floated up and encircled Paul's head. And when he finally stopped coughing and had caught his breath again, a look of great satisfaction spread over his face. He had figured out a way to drive the gumbaroos away. I want you bullies to rest up for a few days, he said to the seven axemen, and there was a twinkle in his eyes. There's plenty of hard work on the job ahead, but I'm not quite ready for you to start on it yet. So just you sit around and take things easy for a while until I'm ready for you to begin. And he tossed down his big tobacco pouch where all could reach it and sauntered away. The seven axemen looked at one another and grinned, and they proceeded to fill up their pipes again. If their new boss wanted to pay them their wages just for loafing, why, they were perfectly willing to accommodate him. They had often looked forward to such a time as this, when they might take their ease and talk and smoke together, all without being worried by the thought that they were leaving necessary tasks undone or were losing valuable working time. Never before had the opportunity of indulging in such fancied leisure come to them, and now they settled back to enjoy themselves to the fullest extent. Many were the subjects which they discussed, and great the problems which they settled. Countless were the tales of woodland adventures which they told, and mighty were the labors each performed in the telling. Oh, wonderful men, these seven axemen! wonderful in brain as well as in muscle. So tireless were their minds that they could listen to the same joke a hundred times a day and laugh each time harder than the last. And all the time while they rested, they smoked their pipes, wonderful old pipes which they had used constantly through many, many years. Each one used up two bushels of tobacco every time it was filled, and by the time the second day had come to an end, the contents of Paul's tobacco pouch were almost half gone. The smoke hung over the land like a cloud, and for hundreds of miles there was not a gumbaroo to be found in the woods. The fierce creatures, sniffing the strangling smoke which filled the air, had been fooled into thinking that a terrible fire was raging through the forest. Frightened nearly out of their wits, they had scrambled away as fast as they could roll. No one knows how far they went ere their flight ceased, for they never were seen nor heard of again in that part of the country. Getting rid of the agora pelters was the next task, 
and this required a little more work. Paul called the seven axemen to him, and they were very glad to put away their pipes and gather around him. They had smoked so much that their tongues were sore, and their two-day rest had grown so tiresome that they were anxious to get back to hard work again. Thanks for joining us today. Check us out on Patreon. The storytime level is only $3, and you can help us meet our small goal of breaking even and covering our expenses. Your support helps pay for all of the things that podcasting requires and helps keep this show alive and growing. If you can't afford to support us financially, go give us a good review, subscribe or follow, and share with your friends and family. Feel free to fact check us and offer suggestions to make our show better for you. You can also send us an email at lostinrevisionpodcast at gmail.com. There's a lot more waiting for us all at the end of the road.